Welcome to our tutorial about using parameters in Inventor. Let's start by creating a sketch, a circle. Now let's dimension it. We'll apply a radial dimension. We right click, select radius, and let's enter a value of 1 inch. OK. Let's exit the sketch. And let's activate the extrude command. We're going to extrude one inch in distance. Click OK. Let's expand the extrusion branch and show sketch one. Right click visibility. Let's right click on the dimension now and select dimension properties. On the properties dialog window, we've got two tabs, dimension settings and document settings. From here, we can access the same settings that we found on the unit and default tolerance control areas of the document settings dialog window. The document settings dialog window can be opened via the tools tab. We have covered this previously in this course, so let's talk about the dimension settings tab. From here, we can change the name of the dimensions. Let's call it dim one, as well as the precision in terms of decimal points. Under value, we see the current dimension value as a reference. It is grayed out right now. Under tolerance, we can specify the tolerance for the current dimension. The drop down menu gives us many different choices default, symmetric, etc. Upper. Here we can specify the values for the upper and lower tolerance ranges. Let's look at deviation under type. This lets us also specify the value for the upper and lower tolerance ranges. Let's select the limit stacked type. This displays the minimum and maximum tolerance value in a stack. And so on, there's a few other types here. Let's stick with the symmetric tolerance type. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to enter a value of a quarter inch. In the evaluated size section, we can specify the tolerance level for the current dimension, plus its upper, its nominal, its lower, and its median values. In our case, let's use the upper value. The current dimension is 1 inch. Let's change the name of D0 to DIM01. Click Apply and OK. And we see our dimension style has now changed. It's underlined with a plus minus quarter of an inch displayed. Let's go to the Tools tab. Let's Update, activate the Measure Distance tool, and let's check this diameter, 2.5 inches. Let's close the Measure Distance window. Let's right click on our dimension now. Dimension Properties. Now you see we have in our value box a nominal value of 1.25 inches for the radius. Let's stick with the default tolerance type, nominal value, apply, and OK. Now let's update and go to the Manage tab. We access the Parameters dialog window by clicking on this tool. Under Model Parameters, here's our new dimension, DIM01. Let's double click to change the name. The next column, Unit, displays the unit specification. In the Equation column, we're able to enter equations or values. Let's say 1.5 inches, for example. And let's click Update. The dimension value in our workspace has updated accordingly to 1.5. Back to the Parameters window. Let's change this value back to 1 inch. The next column shows the nominal value, or the value from the equation column. The model value, this shows the actual calculated size of the parameters. In the tolerance column, we can reset the tolerance. The same thing we're able to do down below, but this resets the tolerance for all the parameters rather than for individual parameters. By the way, I did forget to mention D1 is the dimension of the extrusion. D2 is the taper angle. Now we'll see how we can create user parameters. Let's click Add. For the first parameter, I'd like to calculate the area of my circle. We name the parameter appropriately as area, and now let's choose the units. We need inches squared. 
The caret symbol is available above the number 6 on an American keyboard. You use this caret symbol to notate your exponential values in a formula. Now we see in our equation column the values in red. Red text means the values wrong. We need to type an equation here. Let's open the parenthesis. Dim 0, 1. And let's close the parenthesis. Caret symbol. 2. Multiplied by, you use the asterisk for a multiplication. And pi has to be capital P and capital I. To update the value, click outside the field. We've got the area of the circle shown to us, 3.14 square inches. Let's change the diameter of our circle to 2 inches. As you can see, the value for the area parameter changes as well. Let's restore dim01 to 1. Let's set one more user parameter. Volume. We'll set the units in cubic inches. I n caret 3. Click OK. And let's type our formula here. Area multiplied by d1. Click out of the field to update the value. And let's add one more user parameter, mass. In this case, we'll use pounds for our unit of measurement. LB. OK. Now let's type our formula. Volume multiplied by the density of the material. Let's say we're using iron. We're going to enter a density value of 7.85 grams per cubic centimeter. Inventor automatically takes care of the conversion that's required here. We click outside to update, and here's my weight shown at 0.8909 pounds. If, for example, instead of grams per centimeter cube, we want to use grams per cubed inch, we need to multiply the density, 7.85, by 16.3871. The value of that calculation is 128.64. Let's update the results. And now we're using the grams per cubic inch density to calculate the mass. Let's click Done. I'd like to create one more sketch now. Let's use this face here. Activate the circle tool. Place our circle about here. Let's dimension it now. Right click. Let's use a radius dimension. Half an inch. And click OK. Let's exit the sketch and activate the extrude command. Extruded cut. Select the profile, Extents, Through All, OK. Now let's go back to Parameters on the Manage tab. Here we've got the radius of the second circle, as well as the taper angle of the extrusion, 0 degrees. As you see, we don't have the parameters for the dimension D4. The reason for this is that I use the Through All for the end condition. Let's double click on the extrusion, use a distance of 1 inch instead. By the way, the taper angle comes from the value on the More tab in this drop down menu. Click OK. Let's return to Parameters. Now we've got a value for D4. Since we created an extruded cut, obviously the area, volume, and mass have changed as well. Let's figure out how we can reflect this as well in our equation. Let's begin with the area formula. We'll put our current formula into parentheses. Now minus symbol, open bracket, and dimension D3, close parentheses. Oh, let me delete that. Square that radius, caret 2, multiplied by pi, capital P, capital I, close parentheses, and click outside to update the value. The value in all three cells has updated accordingly. Now let's rename some of our dimensions so that they're more descriptive and hence less confusing. Let's call dim01 radius1. We'll call d3 radius2. 
and simply click outside of the cell to update the changes. As you see, the parameter names update automatically in the formulas. We're ready to click Done. Now let's get rid of both of these extrusions. Shift select them, right click, and delete. Delete the sketches too, yes. Let's create another sketch. I'll start with the rectangle tool. Right click, done. Apply dimensions. This dimension will be half an inch. And the longer dimension will make one inch. OK. Finish the sketch. Activate the extrude command. Let's extrude two inches. OK. Now let's go to the Manage tab. Click on Parameters. Now we did delete our previous extrusions, but you'll notice that some of those parameters are still here. Parameters that I use to calculate the user parameters are still required, and hence they're still displayed here. By the way, we're able to collapse the model and user parameter sections by clicking on the minus sign to the left of each one. We can also sort the parameters alphabetically by name. Just click the parameter name heading. Let's calculate the volume first. D6 multiplied by D7 multiplied by D8. Click outside to update the value. Right now we only need volume and mass, so I can go ahead and delete area. Select it, right click, delete parameter. Now let's make dimension 7 equal to dimension 6. Close, done. And let's update the model. And back to the parameters window. Let's say I want model parameters to be driven by the user parameters. Let's figure out how to do this. Let's take a look at the volume parameter. Let's say we've got a volume of 5 cubic inches. We know D6 and D7, and we need to determine the value of the extrusion. Let's create a formula for this. The volume divided by D6 squared. That's because D6 and D7 are equal. Now let's click outside to update the value. Let's write this formula in a different way too. We can simply multiply D6 by D7. Let me delete this extra parenthesis. Click outside to update. And the value stays the same, of course. Let's exit this window. Done. And let's update. Let's change my sketch a little bit. Right click, Visible. Here we can tell that this parameter is driven by a formula. The FX indicates that. Let's close this. And let's change the value, for example, to 1.5 inches. OK. Now let's update. The sketch dimension and the extrusion dimension both change. Let's right click on extrusion 3, show dimensions. Now let's go back to the parameters window. Once again, we see that D6 has changed, as well as the value of the extrusion. The volume and mass, however, are still the same. Let's click Done. And this concludes our first tutorial about using parameters. We've got two more chapters on the subject of controlling your work via parameters. We'll be picking up in our next tutorial with an exercise.